Come exalt his name forever. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, blessed be those who hide in him, those who look on him are radiant. We'll never be afraid, we'll never be afraid. Good morning, good morning. As you come on, kindly share, please. Kindly share, kindly share. Magnify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name. Together, glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name. Together, um, as you come on, kindly share the broadcast. Hallelujah, Jesus, we praise your name. We glorify your name. We magnify your name. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are excellent in all your ways. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are God all by yourself. None can be compared to you, O God. None can come close to you, everlasting Father. Hallelujah. You are a covenant-keeping God. Hallelujah. Jire, the covenant-keeping God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Elohim, the covenant-keeping God. Hallelujah, Jesus. He is the covenant-keeping God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to another time of glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise and glorify and honor and magnify the Lord this morning. Come exalt exalt his name together let's exalt our god together he is lord he is master he is savior hallelujah he is god all by himself none can be compared to him none can come close to him not if not toops close hallelujah he stands supreme hallelujah he stands at top of the pack he can never be hallelujah below below always above never beneath that's the god that we serve and we come before him this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts we come before him for a time of expectancy expect the lord to move expect to hear from god expect to get a solution expect Expect to get a resolution. Expect to feel his tangible presence. Hallelujah. Expect the unexpected this morning. Hallelujah. As we gather in our upper room experience. Expect fire. Rebo Korobo Sanda. Expect water. Expect wind. Rebo Korobo Sanda. Expect 
expect the earthquake to shake out some things out of our lives spiritually. Shake out. Whenever you come in the presence of God, be expectant for what God is about to do hallelujah hallelujah expect your strength to be renewed this morning as we come into his presence hallelujah expect your joy to be increased in his presence there is fullness of joy expect a miracle this morning expect Expect healing if it's healing your comfort this morning. Expect, hallelujah, a move of the glory of God this morning. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for why you are. We thank you, Lord, for how you are. We thank you, Lord, hallelujah, that those who call upon you, you hear them. And as we come this morning, Father God, we are looking to you. We are looking to you, oh Father, the God who reveals all mysteries, the God with all answers answers father god we are looking to you hallelujah anything that is in us that will hinder us from hearing seeing smelling tasting hallelujah the move of god this morning we repent we renounce it we renounce our thoughts even persons who come on the live this morning i say oh and a pastor weird a marsha de pa cho me can't me not like you from yes repent yes 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 hallelujah 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 the messenger hallelujah is not the most important is the message that comes from the messenger hallelujah it is no coincidence no incidence no accident why god would have me on this life this morning rejoice that i am here this morning hallelujah as the lord has given the they, 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 they charge for, for, for Rohan to take some rest, for Pastor Wade to get some rest. Hallelujah. I am so grateful and honored that I can be here to stand in his is is dead hallelujah I, I i cannot feel his shoes i have my own shoes he wears a size 11 i wear a size seven and a half i cannot feel his shoes but i can feel the slot that god has given me to do this morning so i thank god for his presence i thank god for being so mindful of all of us hallelujah in the mighty name of jesus i thank god hallelujah that he is the one that has set us in motion this morning to receive from him hallelujah i thank god hallelujah that we are individuals this morning filled with all of what he desires for us to give unto the world i thank god this morning that he has created us for good works we are his workmanship created for good works i thank god this morning for each person on these lives wherever you are you are an impactor hallelujah you are placed hallelujah issued mighty god with what is needed for your times and for your season and for where he has sent you i am in the mighty name of jesus wherever you are planted i pray this morning that there shall be a blooming in the mighty name of jesus we will not try to fill somebody's shoes we will wear our own sizes and we will do effectively in our own sizes i decree and declare this morning that every spirit of comparison every spirit of comparison petition be destroyed by fire as we will wear our size 5 6 7 8 9 10 size 11 whether you're wearing a sandal whether you're wearing a booty whether you're wearing a spike heel we shall wear what god gives us to wear and be effective in the areas where he has sent us in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth mighty god we thank you this morning 
for unpegging akarobonda di bakanda unpegging us this morning unpegging our ear gate this morning in the name of Jesus where the enemy would have come in this morning and would want to put a divide and would want to send some people off the live to say don't listen to her we decree and declare this morning father God that you have done an unpegging this morning in the mighty name of Jesus unpeeling opening up our hearts to receive that which you desire to give us in this Kairos moment. Every spirit of rebellion, we bind you now in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind you with chains and we bind your nobles with fetters of iron. Every spirit spirit of distraction we bind you every distorting spirit we bind you everything that exalts itself against this fourth watch hour this morning we bind you in the mighty name of jesus and we decree and declare that it is god who will increase Rende kito korobosa ya makata. Rakundo rubunda di bakatai. Ya koya mosa. God will increase in this. O Korobonde, in this hour, in the mighty name of Jesus, self be slain. Reku Robo Sende, Rebanda Rabakanda de Bekete, Robo Shekanda Ribakata, Robo Sheke, God be magnified, and self, Rebonda Ribakata, take away yourself, Rabanda Rabasa. We decree and declare that it is the fullness of God that will be made manifest in our lives today we decree and declare that we are game changers today in the mighty name of Jesus as we pray for our communities and we pray for our nations and we decree and declare that we are hallelujah the solutions hallelujah that a co-worker is looking for we are the solution that a family member is looking for we are the solution that a community member is looking for we are a solution that our parish our province and our state is looking for in the mighty name of Jesus. They shall not be void of the voice of God. They shall not be void of the, the, the acts of God because you ha korobo sata, you on TikTok, you on Facebook, you on Instagram, you on Aras Internet Radio, you on YouTube, you are alive, you are present, you are wearing your own shoes, irrespective of how high it is or how low it is, whether it cover your toe or not, you are sitting in your own shoes this morning. Rando Koribanda de Bekete Reba Korobo San in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, we thank you for influencers on this life. Influencers that will be called before kings in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Influencers with the tongue of the learned to speak to those who are weary. Influencers with the tongue of the ready writer that will write on the hearts of men in the name of Jesus. Will write on the tablets of the hearts of men the things of God in the mighty name of Jesus Christ influencers almighty god with the wisdom the knowledge the understanding the counsel the might hallelujah and the fear of the lord mighty god that will minister unto those who lead hallelujah giving them solutions father god for what heals us as a nation in the name of jesus what heals our workplace rebo korobonda di bakatai Thank you, Lord. We are your workmanship this morning. We are your workmanship this morning. We are your workmanship this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. As these words penetrate. Hallelujah. Your people this morning. Rejection is going hallelujah hallelujah depression is going anxiety is going in the name of Jesus because they cannot stand to the truth of who you are hallelujah they cannot stand to the truth of who God says you are in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth 
thank you father god hallelujah for what you will do this morning in the mighty name of jesus we thank you for your peace that pass it all understanding hallelujah that will rule and will reign through in our hearts through our lives in the name of jesus christ of nazareth thank you father hallelujah thank you father thank you jesus thank you jesus saturate us with your presence oh god saturate us with your anointing hallelujah jesus hallelujah hallelujah jesus we thank you father god take preeminence take my tongue and teach me what to say oh father god in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah thank you jesus hallelujah good morning again good morning remember to share the live share 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 that's another good work you are created for good work you know sometimes you you listen to a testimony you will hear person say somebody sent me something and what they sent me was the right word and that prevented me from doing x or prevented me from doing y and you hear somebody say somebody said something to me that um, invited me to join a particular program or whatever and when i joined the program this happened and from i've joined the program i've never left because what good works we are created for good works we see so many things that are being circulated as soon as something negative happened it is circulated it it reaches so far so vast so wide it is circulated some sometimes you 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 find your family members even from abroad like for us in jamaica the people from abroad are telling us what is happening in jamaica because they get it so quickly negative news fly fast this is god's news this is good news hallelujah and it need to fly fast it need to fly fast because we are god's workmanship uh, he created us for good works and sharing our life sharing it on our facebook page is good works even if nobody at all put a thumbs up or put a like on it you don't matter that do the good work of sharing the good news which is the gospel as a matter of fact i, I just remember i didn't share it on my facebook page be the do the good works by sharing it on your page if nobody likes it that's fine nobody sometimes people will watch something and they don't click like but they are among the viewers you don't know whose lives you are changing wait listen guys when you look sometimes on the vast amount of people that are on a live watching somebody doing something unproductive when they come off that life nothing they don't gain anything nothing at all just somebody doing something unproductive and they share it share it share it, share it, share views too many people watching something that will not bear fruit fruit that will last it may be a little laugh for no moment but it's not fruit that will last and you see so many people this is food that will fill you for a lifetime food that will fill you for a lifetime god is equipping us hallelujah let me share share the life on my page God is equipping us with food that will last for a lifetime. And that's what the fourth watch hour is. And God has made it so that God has made it so that it has been it has been I don't know if there is any program on Facebook that has run for so many every day, five days a week, apart from the days like yesterday, which was a holiday, and um sometimes when you you definitely need the rest and god can we can count on 10 fingers the amount of days that we don't have this food when we are not being fed sometimes um i see pastor prepare overnight in prepare 
everything open, Bible open, write down what he need to write down. And I say, God, take him out and carry it somewhere else. When you tell God to take your tongue and teach you what to say, he's going to take your tongue and take it to where it needs to be. It needs to be where your to his tongue needs to be. And I see where God has been feeding and people's lives have been transformed by what God is saying to us, saying to us. And so we, we begin our fast this morning. Why are you not cheering? We begin our fast. We have quarterly fast. This is quarter number two. We begin our fast this morning. And we end on the 17th. We will have end of fast at 4.30 p.m. Sometimes, and I must apologize, sometimes some things occur in between that hour, 4.30. Some things happen, people walk into church. Things are happening behind the scenes and we are unable to come on air. But as you have been taught for so many years, this is year three, um, that is supposed to be chum change. If pastor don't come on or I don't come on or whoever else pastor would have on, you know, we can do our end of fast on our own because we have been learning. So anytime you don't see us come on the end of fast, it's something that has happened behind the scenes that has caused it. But you can do your end of fast. Make sure because you can't go to God and tell God, say, boy, God, the reason why is because this person or that person or that person we are responsible for our own salvation we are responsible we cannot go to god and say the reason why i am in this state of my life is because my mother did this to me god that cannot work that cannot work we all have a responsibility for our own salvation because we cannot be pointing a finger and say the reason why i'm so angry is because of my husband your husband don't do you nothing you choose to be angry because you always have a choice to be angry or to have a soft answer walk away you have a, 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 a you have a a, a you have a choice whether you're going to trace them. You have a choice whether you're going to walk away. You have a choice whether you're going to say something, but say it with a soft answer. You know, as I say that, I say, God, I take my mouth and I carry go somewhere. As I say that, I, I, I always used to admire my mother and my father. My father is the fire fire blazing like even no need cur my father does not need cursing eye for blaze and my mother the calm one <clears throat> so when my father blazing she does she does um just go in the proper english when him blazing and part one him blazing man she does soft answer come English, proper English, not even answering back in Pato or anything. No, she does English. Quench the fire. It must stop. The blaze must go down. It must. It must. It smothers. She smothers his anger and is railing and raging with a soft answer. All the time, it has to out. When she see the smoke, she continues with the soft answer. And then all of a sudden, there is no smoke. No fire, no smoke. It has been smothered by a soft answer. Smot one day, I remember one day when I hear my mother answer my father in Patwa. Listen to me. My father and her were carrying, both of them were carrying something. And my father, him, you know, with him, rough self or whatever. And me hear my mother answer him. Well, I heard my mother answer him in Patwa. And my father almost dropped the thing that they were carrying together with one big laugh. Because in all his life and in all my life, I've never heard that before. 
So it caused one laughter in the yard. My sisters and I, whoever was there and heard my mother answering my father in Potter, he, he almost dropped the thing that both of them were carrying. And he laughed, he laughed, he soft answer again. He laughed, he laughed, he laughed, he laughed, he laughed, he laughed because he never heard that coming from her before. Because she's always, always, I've I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't remember ever hearing my mother like really raising her voice like, like a meme, me, no, mm -mm. just a difference. And I see the impact that it had when things could have become worse. Because you can imagine a fire and another fire that is going to cause a big, 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 big blaze, but a fire and water works so god wants us to be the solutions in our households the solution in our households god wants us to be the examples in our households i still don't share it yet. let me go on the page god wants us to be examples in our households hallelujah hallelujah shared Hallelujah. God wants to be examples in our in our workspaces. Examples, soft answers. Um, a person that's supposed to be coming to you with something that somebody does. And by the time they leave your presence, they are even more angrier. Because of the, the counsel that they have received from you. It's supposed to be that when they come in your presence, you are supposed to be the water over the fire. The water that quenches the blaze. I have gotten some counsels. I have gotten some counsels from persons who, if I never stand up on my two feet... My husband, up to yesterday, I was saying it. My husband and I would be in war because some of the things that they come with and some of the things that they are saying that the Lord is saying, that now would become a stronghold. And when it becomes a stronghold, then I start looking at my husband differently. And when I start looking at my husband differently, it causes problem in my house. If a council comes, and when the council comes, if a prophetic, Father God, thank you. If a prophetic word comes, and when the prophetic word comes, it is going to cause problems for you and your family members. Problems for you and your husband. Problems for you and your children. You are going to be in war with them. Because of what you hear. You have to think twice. Why did you get this information? Is this coming from a God source? Is the prophetic word or the information saying to you, well, I sense that your sister is causing this problem. However, what the Lord wants you to do is to pray concerning it. Shut it down. Pray. Pray for the bloodline. Pray da da da. Or is it saying, your sister, your sister, she is the source of your problem. Your sister, your sister. And by the time you leave that presence, you're hungry and hate your sister. Suppose God come right at that moment. Can you say to God, God, the reason why I am so bitterly angry is because the prophetic word came that told me it's my sister and I'm angry. I can't believe my sister did this to me. That's it. That's it. We have to think about the sources, the intents of informations. That is coming to our ear gate in this season. Because we are solutions. And if we are going to be solutions in our family. We cannot be the instigator of the war. We cannot be the fuel for negativity. We have to be the fuel for change. 
So we have to, t whatever words are coming into our ear gate, we have to save them. Save them through the strainer of the Holy Spirit. And when you save them through the strainer of the Holy Spirit, see what God desires for you to do with it. With it. With it. And it's never war. Never division. You have some families that are split down the middle. And when you look and see who is at the center of the split, it is a person who is professing Jesus. Splitting down the middle. You have some churches that are split in two because of one person who, desire, who says that they are hearing from God. So we have to know what is coming into our ear gates, our eye gates. Sometimes what you see is not reality. What you see with your eyes is not reality. It's an assumption or a presumption, but it is not reality. And because the enemy tell you, say, it looks familiar, it may feel like reality, but it is not and that is why Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own eyesight. Where you see what you see, but in all your ways acknowledge God and he will direct your path. He will say to you, Marsha, what you are seeing, what you are hearing is not so. Is not so. It looks familiar, but it is not the thing. It is not the thing. Just like our identical twin, they look alike, but they are not the same. Not the same people. They look alike though, but they are not the same. And so sometimes we see some things and nothing, nothing at all go the way our eyes is showing us. And so we have to ensure that we remain the source by the things that we see, see through the eyes of purity. And that sometimes I have that problem. I can talk for myself myself because remember the enemy is always going to come with things that you had struggled with in your past so if you have trust issues if you had trust issues in your past then he's going to bring some situation in your now that looks like like you just have a look of it and then you draw a conclusion and nothing like that nothing goes the way how you see it. Sometimes some people say them feel it, them feel it, them feel it. And nothing goes the way how you feel. When you hear from the person who you feel that way about or when you hear when you when you when you when you have a I give you this joke. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I give you this joke. I remember when I was younger. I don't know if I shared it before. I remember when I was younger and um we used to have be at a police youth club and there was this girl there at the police youth club you know where all of us were there young people teenagers whatever whatever all of a sudden i her, her brother started attacking me like when i'm coming from school he used to trouble me and say um what he's going to do to me because i am troubling his sister and da 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 and every i used to be so afraid because i used to walk home after i take the bus i walk home and i used to be so afraid my, lo my lunch money was not that much for me to take a bus and then take another bus so i walked home i walked home from one bus and I tell you, I was so afraid of this guy because he lay, he used to lay with me in the evenings and he used to trouble me, trouble me, tell me what he's going to do to me. And I was afraid and God would have it. One day he saw another person who used to go to my school too. And he even told her some things about me that was not true. And she came to school and she was talking about the things that the person told her. And she described, she told people though, you know, she told people about the things that, that the guy saw her and told her. And um, 
it is god would have had it i'm telling you god is such a great vindicator god would have had it that my neighbor was her relative and so when she when the girl who came to my high school now told my neighbor what the gentleman what the guy was saying the neighbor said to her said nothing like that that's not true that is not true and that's how i got vindicated in that era with school and the girl could go i said my auntie tell me or whoever she was i think it was our cousin or something and she says it's not true and that's how i got vindicated that end with my with school but i still had to face this young man you know what God did? One day, we sat down in police youth club and coincidentally, I put it in quotation mark, this girl sat beside me and I had to interact with her. And it looked like my game, my joke was, my, my joke, my joke aside was on that day. And I was just, inter remember, I didn't know it was she who was doing the thing, you know. I was just interacting with my fellow club height and i just had her cracking up and I, we were there interacting and we were just there cracking up and you know what the girl looked on me and said oh my god i didn't know that you were like this and look how i told my brother to beat you up because i thought you were stush and you were hype that's how i knew that she was the source of my pain from her brother the lord would have it that i sat beside her and she saw who i was so basically she was looking at me from a distance and based on what she saw she formed a conclusion and because she formed a conclusion she made my life hell how many people's lives are in hell because of some conclusions that me marsha we we had that formed my life was hell fear fear took me over because this girl watching from a distance saying i am stush Sick our brother on me, our brother who never have nothing to do, lay waited me in the evenings for however long that was, just to torment me of what he's going to do to me. He spread rumors on me, nothing like that. And you know how rumors say people love ear people business. You, have, you, have, you, have, you call them. <laughs> I have one name, one name I will call those who love to hear people's bad testimony. And they just, that's it, that's it. They just want to hear the testimony because they want to hear. Yes, Lord help us. And I believe that this is a point as we, we go on this fast. A point for repentance. And listen to me now. I am not talking about you guys. I am talking about myself how many persons lives have I Marsha Wade put in torment because of what I saw what I saw nothing is the truth about what I saw but I formed a conclusion because of what I saw so Lord we come before you this morning as you are unearthing mighty God some little things about us that is not giving us the 100% light mighty God not giving us the, the light without the, the, the shade mighty God some of us are lights but we are lights with the shade don't give us the, the, the true reflections Father God of brightness and illumination because of perception, assumption. Lord, where we have assumed and it caused our lights to be shaded, we repent this morning. Lord, even people who we can't, we don't even know where they are now, but our assumptions and presumptions caused pain and hurt this morning. We repent 
and we renounce it, Father God. Hallelujah. Father God, some person may have even passed on, mighty God. Hallelujah. But we repent this morning and we renounce it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cleanse us, O oh God, of every unrighteousness. Every form of unrighteousness. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, cleanse us this morning, God. And this is not this is not a condemnation. As I say, I am guilty. Yes, I say, Natalie say guilty, guilty, guilty. Judge not. That's the word, and it's word. You know, judge not. And we will not be judged. We have me. I'm guilty of that. And so I repent this morning. I repent. Hallelujah. <coughs> I repent this morning. Thank you, Lord, for revelation that brings redemption. Hey. And as we go up on the husband, we go up on the husband too. The husband. Because <clears throat> as we desire to be married, and some of us desire to be married, sometimes our, what we see, we form a conclusion. And it's so far from reality. And it eludes us from the good gift that God desires to give us. I can tell you, for a person, for myself, for those persons who never know, for myself, I can tell anybody. I had a book and I wrote a list of what I desired. And I remember one of the things I wrote in my book was age age and I remember when God said to me lock up that book this was 2015 he said close that book and I taped up that book and I put it away I stopped praying the prayers and I just said okay God whatever you desire and I close up that book if I was looking through the lens of Marsha Weed, I wouldn't have gotten my good gift. Because my age that I put in the book and the gift that God has given me is older than the age that I put in the book. And I would have missed my good gift. So we assume that because the person is nearer to your age, it's supposed to be it. You assume that because the person is younger than you, it cannot be it. Some women do that. The man is younger than me, so it cannot work because he's younger than me. So we look at what we know and say it cannot work. We look at what we feel and say it cannot work. And we don't look through the lens of God. We are looking through our own eyes. We are looking through our own understanding. And because of that, we miss our Kairos moments. We miss seasons of our lives because we are looking through our lens. So even now, Father God, we pray that we, Almighty God, will be descaled, just as how you sent Ananias, to descale Paul's eyes so that he can no longer see from his perspective, 
but see from your perspective. We pray even now, Almighty God, that you open the eyes of our understanding to see, Father, from your vantage point to see through your lens, to see through your eyes. In all our ways, we will acknowledge you and so that we can see what you are showing us. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. 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 So this morning, I just want to introduce to you the theme of our, our fasting, which is broken to be whole. Broken to be whole. And our scripture this morning is Psalm 34. But I want us before we go to Psalm 34, I want us to, to get some history concerning Psalm 34. Psalm 34 was written by David when he pretended to be insane. When he, he, he pretended to be insane. And the story of, of, of when he pretended to be insane is found in 1 Samuel 21. In front of Ahimelech. He pretended to be insane in front of Ahimelech. Abimelech. Abimelech. Yeah, Abimelech. So the king, the name that is in the book is not Abimelech. However, the name also is referring to is uh, interchangeably. You can use Abimelech or the name that is referred Akish. Akish or Abimelech, same person. So in 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel 21, we are going to read that story that led to David writing Psalm 34. And so the, the, the title for our devotion for the fast is Broken to be Whole. And in in, in, in 1 Samuel 21, we see how we see Saul fleeing from um, uh, David, fleeing from Saul. David had to run for his life from Saul. Can you imagine how David must have felt at points in his life when well we know because he said sometimes his, his soul was downcast sometimes he questioned god about his enemies but so we know that sometimes the state of mind that he was in was a state of brokenness my god imagine this is the man that i saw served with all my heart this is the man that when he um, was was vexed by the spirit i played my harp and i soothed him can you imagine this is the man this is the man's the the the, the king of the nation that i fought goliath for can you imagine some of the times the things that went through david's mind when he was when he encountered saul's wrath when he encountered saul's fire when he encountered saul's words how broken he was times at at points in time he was broken uh, his heart was broken i can just imagine the pain that he was going through and so in first samuel 21 we see that david went to visit ahimelech so not abimelech the king no we know ahimelech and ahimelech was the priest and so when david fled to ahimelech david was hungry and so David asked Ahimelech for some food to eat. And Ahimelech said, David, I don't have any food, you know. Furthermore, if he asked David, where are your men? And David said, you know that 
they are they are coming they are coming man and 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 um he is just um doing some work for Saul for yeah for Saul so David hid that he was running away from from David he said the king sent me on a private matter so David did not tell um Ahimelech that he was running away. He was running away from 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 Saul. So he was hungry. And so Ahimelech now the priest said to him, David, I really don't have any food to give you. Know. All I have is the holy bread. That's all he had. And David said, Boy, I would I I would eat the holy bread and he said I can't give you the holy bread if you and your men were in sexual activity because that would make you unclean and David said no man we are not we are not um dirty we have not been having any relationship relationship with any women I could never allow myself and my men to be in such a position and know that we are fighting and whatever whatever David said to him and he gave him the bread since there was no other food available verse 6 the priest gave him the holy bread the bread of the presence that was placed before the lord in the tabernacle it had just been replaced that day with fresh bread verse 7 says now doig the edomite saul's chief herdsman was there that day having been detained before the lord David said to Ahimelech, do you have a spear or a sword? The king's business was so urgent that I didn't even have time to grab a weapon. That's another lie. David was running away from Saul. He didn't even have a weapon. And so when he asked, do you have a weapon? He said, he said, um, they said to him, the only weapon we have is the weapon that you used to kill Goliath. And he said, that can work. And that's how David ended up with a weapon. So verse 10 now. So I, I, I'm just skipping through because we need to go to Psalm, Psalm 34. He said, so David escaped from Saul and went into King Achish of Gath. So King Achish now is also called Abimelech. But the officers of Achish were unhappy about his being there. Isn't this David the king of the land? They asked. Isn't he the one, one the people honor with dances and singing? Saul has killed his thousands and David is ten thousand. Verse 12 says, David heard these comments and was very afraid. Can you imagine the terror? No, they recognized who he was. And no, they can't afford for Saul to hear that they are harboring his enemies. And so David became afraid and said, my God, look at what I have gotten myself into now. David heard this, so he pretended, verse 13 says, so he pretended to be insane, scratching on doors and drooling down his beard. Finally, King Akish said to his men, must you bring me a madman? We already have enough of them around here. Why should I let someone like this be my guest? And that is how David escaped Abimelech by pretending to be mad. And so, how do we become whole in our brokenness? I have an acronym, S-E-E-C. -E -E and let us look at Psalm 34. Psalm 34. So we are at Psalm 34. 34. This psalm was penned during the time that David pretended to be mad. Can you imagine? And the psalm begin, I will praise the Lord at all times i will constantly speak of his praises can you imagine this man had to be running for his life 
this man had near death experiences and the first thing he did was see who did he see he saw god as his source so the s for the c is source god was his source he looked to god who do you think gave him that idea to pretend like a madman so that he could escape who do you think gave him that idea to pretend like a madman david escaped by pretending to be mad drooling all over himself he saw God as the source of his protection. He saw God as the source of his leading. God led him to where food was. Or else he would have died for hunger. But God led him to food. And then God led him to a, a route to escape. Because guess what? David knew about God. David knew that from God gave a, 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 a made a covenant he will keep it what was the covenant god said david will be king god said david will be king so he's not king yet so he cannot die without being a king or else god would have what forfeited his own word so he said i I, in my distress, in my downcast soul, in my disappointment, I will praise the Lord at all times, all means, whether it's spring, summer, autumn, or winter, no matter what season of life, I will boast only in the Lord. So he will boast as God, you are my source of strength. You are my ever-present help in time of trouble. You are the glory and the lifter of my head. You are my hill from whence cometh my help. I will boast in the Lord and be glad. You are God all by yourself. Eternal God, you are my refuge. That is boasting in God. Boasting in God as in source. He said, he said in verse 2, I will boast only in the Lord. Not going to boast in my sword. Not going to boast, boast in the fact that I am going to be king. Not going to boast in my accomplishments. David killed ten. Um, Saul king killed a thousand. Thousands. David king tell, ki killed tens of thousands. I will not boast in none of those things. I will boast in the Lord come let us tell of the Lord's greatness let us exalt his name together I prayed to the Lord and he answered me and he freed me from all my fears those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy and no shadow of shame will darken their faces. And another, um, that's one of my favorite scriptures. Another scripture said, those who look to him, look to him are radiant and their faces are never covered with shame. Never. And so with that, we can look at the, another word, another um, the letter E for the acronym C. So David said, saw God as his source and then David saw the evidences of the might and of the power of God I can imagine this scripture when he was writing it he looked at oh God allowed him to escape he got the evidence that God is his protection the evidence that God is with him when he slayed Goliath because he had his sword. 
He had his sword, so he, he although he, he was the one who slayed Goliath, just in case he may have forgotten, he got the sword from the priest. So the sword was now in his presence. So the evidence is there that he is still alive. The evidence is there that God did not put him to shame. So David said, those who look to God as their source will never be covered with shame. Never means it can't happen. Never means no matter if I have to, if he had to pretend to be a madman. For the moment, he may look stupid in the eyes of them, but it is God's doing and he's never put to shame. Those who look to God Instagram people are radiant. They glow. They glow with the joy of the evidence. There's a song that says, I've got evidence. Evidence. What's your evidence this morning? What's your evidence this morning that will make you whole irrespective of the fact that you are broken in some area of your life. You may have gotten some disappointing news, something that would have caused you to be broken, but God has a track record, his track record of never failing. His track record, you can look at his track record. Am I not the God who, what has God done for you lately that you can look at as evidence so Paul, so so David had evidence, and so he could say, "In my desperation, I prayed to the Lord, and He listened. He saved me from all my troubles. King Abimelech was going to sort him out." Because King Abimelech knows that he is the enemy of Saul. So King Abimelech was going to fix in business. But he cried unto God in his desperation for escape. And God delivered him from all his troubles. God gave him the evidence that he is a deliverer. Has God delivered you this morning from anything? When I go to Jubilee, every time I go down to that place, every time I see bed 67, I can boast in the Lord and tell the people who I go down there to minister to that I have a God who is a deliverer because I know he delivers me. How do you know he delivers I have evidence. How do you know he delivers? I've got evidence. How do you know he delivers? I know he delivers me. He delivered me then and he still delivers me. So the evidence is there. When I tell them my past and I tell them who I am now, them say are true. Oh my God. And I said, God can do it for you. Because he did it for me. And he did it for Brenda. And he did it for Sonia. And he did it for Sutherland. And he did it for Blessed. He did it. And so he'll do it again for you. He'll do it again. You may not know how. You may not know when, but he'll do it again. Just rely on his evidence. Evidence. Just rely on the evidence that he has given unto you. Verse 7. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fears him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. 
Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. He is our only source. Only source. So the joy is in taking refuge in Jesus. Um, There's so something that was bothering me. You know, bother me. And yesterday while we were doing our AM prayer, the Lord said to me, just uh, tell them to ask me a question. Tell them to ask me a question and pray for the answer. Not to say we have never done it before. Not to say that it has never been done before or I have never done it before. I'm just telling you about just the tasting of the goodness of God. And I ask God the question, you know, and I listen for the answer, you know. So when the answer came, I tasted peace. I tasted peace. I tasted a peace that passed all understanding. It was so refreshing, the peace that I tasted. I got an answer that it saturated me up with a peace. That was so good. That's what happens when God is your source. You get to experience joy. Experience peace. And it's, it's a delicious meal. You get to experience hope. And that tastes so good. Tastes, ah oh man, it tastes so, it tastes better than a, a a three course meal just taste it and see that God is good oh the joys of those who take refuge in him I'm telling you when you can testify about the goodness of God fear the Lord you is God the people for those who fear him will have all they need. And this fear means to have a reverence for God, to look at him as your source, to not be a complainer, but to look at him and rock back on his evidence. Listen to me, the children of Israel got their demise. The ones who left um, Egypt got their demise because they did not bank on the evidence. God showed them over and over that he was their source and he gave them evidence. They wanted manna, they get it. They wanted meat, they get it. They wanted they, to escape the enemy, he opened the, the sea. They wanted water, they get it. Everything that they need. Their clothes were not wearing out. Their shoes were not wearing out. They got evidence of the cloud by day to protect them from the sun and the light by the fire by night. They got evidence. Enemies came upon them and they defeated them because God was fighting for them. They had evidence, so many evidence. However, they did not see the evidence they complained. And they complain, and God said, Look at oh no, you people, you guys will not go to the promised land. Not one of you, because you did not see me as you did not bank on my evidence, although you were enjoying my me as a source. At one point in time, they didn't even see God as source, they were thinking of going back to Egypt to get onions and all kind of same thing when they used to get eat and left they were looking for the eat and left and so god was just so done with them because they did not see god as they did not bank on his evidence the two people who banked on god's evidence joshua and caleb they were the ones who ended up going to the promised land they saw God as a source. If God is going to tell me to do this, that means he will give me 
my is full backing and i can bank on god because he did it for me already he did it for me already what evidences do you have that you can bank on in your no situation numbers 23 verse 19 says god is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent whatever he says is so whatever he promises is so he cannot tell a lie he cannot lie so you have evidences already of some things that you were even frustrated about and you know of it in your possession. You have evidences of some papers that you were waiting on. Some of you were waiting on um, visa. Some of you were waiting on a uh, marriage certificate. Some of you, were, whatever paperwork you were waiting on. And it took so long. I put in the long in quotation marks. But now you have the evidence that they that wait upon God. He has renewed your strength. And now he's saying to you, wait some more, my darling. Wait some more. But you have an evidence of your waiting in your possession. And you can now drop an evidence and say, God, just as all, I waited on this and it come to pass. I thank you this morning that whatever it is that you are waiting on will come to pass because no i have evidence i have evidence some of you are in a job that this time last year you were anxious about that's an evidence that's an evidence some of you are in a business a new business your business is enlarging, expanding. And that's the evidence. I'll really draw for your evidence. Draw for your evidences. Draw on them. Hold them up to God. And tell God, you did it for me already. And I'm believing you that you will do it again. Sometimes it's somebody's testimonies and evidence. You see them living out the life living out a situation when they gave the testimony of what they have been through they are now evidence that god can use the quote unquote uh cast aways and you can bank on that and say okay i can use this person's life and this person's story as my evidence that the same way God used them, he can use me. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children. Come forth, watch family members. Come. Come and listen to me this morning. Come and listen to me this morning. And I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I will teach you of risk. Respect God. Respect him as Jehovah Jireh. Respect him as Jehovah Rapha. Respect him as your banner. Respect him as your shield and your buckler. Respect him as your source. Where a man has been our source. And when I say man, I don't mean male man. I mean just human man has been our source let us put god in his rightful place that god is our source this morning we have evidence that a divine connection cannot come in our way unless god send him so when the divine connection comes let's not use the divine connection as our gods this morning did it sometime the divine connection become our gods and let not the divine connection manipulate you into making them becoming 
your God. Sometimes the divine connection is somebody who help you out of a situation. They help you like, for example, the divine connection who help you out of your inner, you were in the world and you know some things were happening to you and God sent a man of God and that man of God is now what the Lord uses as, as, a, as a, a tool to help you to become and, and some persons are still in bondage because the, the stick is over your head to say it is me who made you no human being made you no human being made me nothing God use you as a help and that's where it is you respect the help and thank god for the help but the help must not beat you over your head with a stick to remind you that i am who god use it listen to me and you must not do that to any human being thank god that god use you as a source come let me teach you the fear of the lord this morning let me teach you the fear of the lord this morning when we do that and pretend to be gods in people's life we don't fear god because god is the only source come let me teach you the fear of the lord this morning that's what david said let me teach you the fear of the lord for respect god and let you know that you human beings who god sent to help another human being is not their source come let me teach you the fear of the lord this morning and anybody who feel like you're under bondage from a human being because a human being is telling you that you are to to see them as gods in your life come let me teach you the fear of the lord this morning because god is who send them god is who send them to you you cry out for help and God send them as a source. You who are have a spirit in you is being used to be a help to others. But it is the God in you is the source for their help, not you. Don't get it twisted. Don't get don't let God and you have anything. Don't get it twisted. Sometimes we do things to people and we hear them testifying. And it has happened to me. And I want them to call my name. It has happened to me before. You want them to testify. And you want them to say, and the Lord send um, Marsha or the Lord send whatever name my name is to you know, Becky or whatever. And they are testifying. And, and sometimes you, you, you can't wait. To hear your name drop into the testimony. Alright, not Uno. Me. It has happened to me. And I have to go back to God and say, God forgive me for pride. Let me teach you the fear of the Lord this morning. Forgive me for pride. I want to hear why my name not calling. I need my name to call. So I can feel good. And the person will call my name and I feel like, can you imagine? You know? How dare me? Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? Verse 13 says, then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Can you imagine? You want to live long? Keep by your mouth. Mota Massi Liza, you na hear your mama they call you. Chat and chat and chat and chat, you na hear your mama they call you. You chat too much, you must a lie. That is Psalm 34, verse 13. Chat too much, you must a lie. You na hear your mama they call you. Liza, keep by your mouth. You chat too much, you must a lie. Hi, my mommy. Good morning, my mommy. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Search for peace and, and work to maintain peace. We are peacemakers. And if you notice, is the same David 
that was talking oh i have to check the time that was talking the same david that could kill saul you know when he was in the cave you know he was so near to saul you know that he could kill saul you know and you know what david did just tear off cut off piece of him clothes you know david could have killed saul and when one of his one of his men came to him and told him how much what he did to saul you know you know what david said how dare you touch the lord's anointing so david is saying this man is saying turn away from evil and do good search for peace david was running away from a man david had the full backing of god and david ran away from this man you know why him cast his, his peace 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 and work to maintain it you know how david worked to maintain his peace with saul he took away himself he took away just keep he kept running and running and running and running he sought to maintain peace he didn't he didn't combat him he never go up in him fierce never call him phone and trace him tell him how ungrateful he is he searched for peace and he worked to maintain it his work was run keep running man keep running keep running because he saw saul as the lord's anointing and so in our workplaces, sometimes we have some real cantankerous boss. Have some cantankerous. You have some persons that are cantankerous. They are from a paradigm, as we learn about the paradigm. Sometimes their backgrounds cause them to be the way they are. And so they are war boats. They don't like peace they seek for war and they like they live war and they strive in war they love war you have some persons like that whether they are family they are bosses they are them just that's them but the bible says seek peace search for peace take the peaceful route always always go that route and maintain it all if no matter how broke and that's how you're broken to be whole broken to be whole you see god as your source you see him as your evidence and these psalm 34 giving you some nuggets of the things that you are to do to help you to become whole some of the people them the cantankerous people sometimes you hear some things that they say to you they do to you but search for it man only peace route just go the peace route the eyes of the lord watch over those who do right see the eyes of the lord watch over those who do right his ears are open to their cries for help and that is how you get the backing of god that is how you get the full backing of god when you take on things for yourself we eh? a trace for trace a match for match a war for war we only war against demons. We don't war against people. So when you match the people who are warring against you, you cannot get God's, God's backing. So God says, the word of God says, um, the ears of the Lord are open to the, those who cry for help. But the Lord turns his face against those who do evil. He will erase their memory from the earth. The Lord hears his people when they call to him for help. He rescues them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. <clears throat> and that's our focus scripture for this morning. For the fast for today. Although we are reading all of Psalm 34. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. We know that David. David had moments of time when his spirit was crushed he was in so much pain and the other e 
The other E is for the word see this today. Go forth and see God. See the hand of God in your life. Is he is your exceedingly great reward. He said that to Abram in, <coughs> excuse me, in Genesis 15 verse 1. He is your exceeding great reward. So he's your source, he's your evidence, and he's your exceedingly great reward. We see what God did to David's enemies. <clears throat> and we see the end result with David. <clears throat> David became king. He was rewarded for seeking peace. He was rewarded for honoring authority. He was rewarded. Hallelujah. For seeing God as his source. He was rewarded as looking at the evidences so that he could pen these things. Irrespective of how he felt, he was writing a praise to God. So he saw God. He praised him in his circumstance. And David was rewarded. He is our exceedingly great reward. Our Lord God Almighty was rewarded. Uh, David was rewarded by God who is our exceedingly great reward. And so your evidences that you have is a testimony that God is your exceedingly great reward. You were rewarded. You were rewarded. You have the reward in your hand. Hallelujah. Salvation is a reward. Hallelujah. We don't deserve it. We don't deserve it. But God, he is our exceedingly great reward. So today, just see in no matter how you're feeling this morning, whether you're happy, whether you're downcast, whether you are in the middle, in between, they're finding your way. See this morning. See God as your source. See him as your evidence. See him as your exceedingly great reward. And that is the road to wholeness. Hallelujah. Psalm 34. Meditate on it. I, I didn't finish reading it, but you can. Finish reading it. Verse um, 19 to 22. Read over it. See what the Lord will say to you about it. Meditate on it. Meditate on verse 18. Let it become a part of your day. Study verse 18. God is close to you. Close to those who are broken hearted. He never left David. He was right there. When David cried out to God. God why? Why? God was right there. And then he said alright then. But I will. He cried out to God again. And then you see him put another but. Afterward, he will just look to God. He will just rejoice in who God is. That's how David lived this. And he had a repentive heart. A heart of repentance. So just look to God this morning. Look to God this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for being our help, our source. Thank you, Lord, for being our evidence. Thank you for the evidences that you have given us thus far. Thank you for the evidence is that you are giving us today thank you for the evidences to come in the mighty name of jesus we thank you that this word uh, mighty god soaks in our dna mighty god in the name of jesus we shall not leave this platform the same way we came in the mighty name of jesus because you spoke hallelujah to your people to us Father God, we thank you, hallelujah, for David's example of a mighty, mighty man of valor who looked to you as his source, his evidence, and his exceedingly great word this morning, God. We thank you for Psalm 34. We thank you for what it represents. Oh, Father God, we thank you, Lord, that it shall, shall be uh, looked upon in a different light, in a different way, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, as you brought light and revelation to your word in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, almighty God, as we lift these emblems unto you, that you will consecrate them, Father God. Ah, God, we thank you for our reward that you gave us, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you gave him to us, O oh Father. Hallelujah. And because of him, we have uh, a connection with you. Hallelujah. He is our mediator, O oh God. We thank you for him being our reality this morning that we live and move and have our being in you. Hallelujah. We thank you for him being our reality of having the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Father God, we thank you for his body and his blood that was shed on the cross. Father, we do not take it for granted. We give you praise, honor, and glory for what it means to our bodies as we eat and as we drink. We thank you for oneness with you. <coughs> Excuse me. Oneness with you. Mind, will, and emotion. Body, soul, and spirit. In Jesus' name, eat and drink. Oh. Hmm. Excuse me. Let the blood go into my throat, cleanse, purify, and dry up anything that is blocking my throat and preventing me from speaking. The word has already gone out. So I say, obey. I say obey to the enemy. The word has already gone out. So for me to be starting coughing in the last part, the word gone out already. Oh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you so much for seeing Fort Watch as the place to be. You could have been somewhere else, but you chose the Fort Watch. On behalf of Pastor Ron Wade, who is taking rest today, who is resting today, please keep him in your prayers. I am Marsha Wade saying, have an amazing day, God's way, for our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day is way. Jesus love you. And me, I'm Pastor Wade, my daughter Athena, and Darian, our son, love the Ola Uno, the Liberty family too. Love Uno. Love you from uh, TikTok. Love you on Instagram. Love you on Facebook. Love you. Bye bye. YouTube. Yes. Love you. Bless you. Like and share. All right. Bless you.